Hey fam, Alexa Reigns here with another reaction. So today we're going to continue with our Golden Girl series and this time with season two, episode 15 titled Before and After. So as always, if you're looking for the full length reaction to this episode or any of my other content, you can find that on Patreon and the link will be in the description below. And also if you want to help propel this channel and support us, um, consider subscribing, commenting, and liking this video in order for uh, more people to be able to join our community. So again, Without further ado, let's get into our episode. Mm. Yeah, it's my wedding present to little Joni Winston. Oh, Joni Winston's getting married. How lovely. I wonder how she'll fix the hair on her ears. <laughs> what happened? Oh, my Rose. God. Rose, Honey? what happened? Honey, call an ambulance. Oh, my goodness. Rose. Oh, oh, oh. take it easy, take it easy. Oh no, is she okay? Dorothy, I'm scared. I've never seen Rose look so terrible. I know, I'm worried too. Will you two knock it off? I'm telling you, there's nothing to worry about. Ma, how do you know that? When you reach my age, you get pretty good at spotting the 12 warning signs of death. <laughs> there's 12 warning signs of death? What are they? Number one, your children start visiting during the week. <laughs> Number two, your doctor won't let you post date a check. <laughs> Number three, you can't eat cream of wheat because it's too spicy. <laughs> no. Will you stop? Will you stop? Excuse me, are you the ladies who came in with Mrs. Nyland? Yes, yes, we are. I'm Dr. Wallerstein. I've been treating her since she was brought in. Oh, Dorothy, she's going to be all right. Her doctor's a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> Lunch, please. How is she, Dr. Jew? Uh, <laughs> Wallerstein. Why don't you come see for yourselves? She'll be fine. It was just an esophageal spasm. A what? A constriction of the food pipe. It can be very painful and frightening, but it's not at all serious. Oh, thank God. She just needs to take it easy for a few days, and she'll be as good as new. Rose, I want you to relax here for a few more minutes, and then your friends can take you home. Oh, good. Thank you, Doc. Yes, thank you. But she doesn't know how to relax. Yeah, is something wrong? You want him back? No, no, I just want to make sure he was gone. I have to tell you what happened. I died. I died and went to heaven. Oh. Uh -huh. Rose, honey, you didn't die. You passed out. You hallucinated. Look, I know it sounds crazy. That's why I wouldn't tell anybody but my two closest friends. But it's true. It really is. I died and went to heaven. Well, it wasn't actually heaven proper. It was somewhere on the outskirts. <laughs> you died and went to a suburb of heaven? <laughs> no. No, it was an enormous train station. Like Grand Central, only cleaner. And at the information desk was this huge train schedule. And next to every departure, it said, Destination Heaven. My first thought was, gee, what a great title for a movie. <laughs> My second thought was, damn, I'm dead. <laughs> well, I, I was so stunned, I just started wandering aimlessly through this train station when I heard a familiar voice calling, Woes! Woes! Is that really you? <laughs> it was my uncle, Johansson. He died when I was nine years old. A steam shovel hit him in the mouth. Oh! <laughs> uncle Johansson asked to see my ticket. And he said, Whoa! Woes! This is a wound twip ticket. <laughs> you can go back and, and continue to live your life. But before you go, I have two pieces of advice. Don't get hit in the mouth with a steam shovel. That can kill you. <laughs> and make the most of the time you're given. You'd be surprised how quickly it goes. Listen, Rose, honey, it's been a very tough night for all of us. So why don't we go home and west and we'll talk about your trip in the <laughs> Dorothy, don't you realize what happened? I died and came back. I was given a second chance. A chance to do all the things I've never done. A chance to live my life for myself for a change. We need to rest, oh, you're though. You're looking at a new Rose Nyland, the girl who's going to eat life. <laughs> Hi, Cookie. How you feeling? Oh, fine, Sophia. But I did die. I died and went to heaven. 
That's nice. <laughs> Find out what pills they gave her and ask for a doggy bag. Now, who in hell was that? Another one of Rose's new friends. Friends? They're more like animals. All they do is party and carry on all hours of the night. I am abhorred. We know what you are, Blanche. I'm glad to finally hear you. Oh, my God, that is not what she said. <laughs> oh. Sophia, I said abhorred. Abhorred, a slut, a tramp, it's all. <laughs> Ever since she took that death trip, she's been a different person. Well, that's no excuse. Shirley MacLaine died five or six times, and she's just sweet as pie. <laughs> oh, hi, girls. I'm glad you're still up. We're on our way to the beach for a sunrise breakfast. Why don't you get dressed and join us? Uh, no, thank you, Rose. Well, okay, suit yourself. I'm just going to grab a few blankets and be on my way. Rose, Rose, come on, sit down. We have to talk. I can't, Dorothy. I've got six people waiting in the van, and they're kind of a rowdy bunch. Hey, I'm just trying to live my life. Yes, but you're ruining ours. You get phone calls at all hours of the night. You have people running in and out of this house, and you don't do a thing to help out around here anymore. Oh, so that's what this is about. You're just upset because I'm not the old Rose sitting around the house doing things for everybody else. Now, that's not true. Yes, it is. Oh, Rose, honey, we're only thinking of you. Well, I'm only thinking of me, too. And if you two can't adjust to my new lifestyle, well, maybe we have a problem here. No, Rose. You're the one who has a problem. Are you telling me that I can't live my life the way I want? Not if it means disrupting everybody else's life, Rose. You're getting impossible to live with. Is that so? Well, then, I guess there's just oh, one no, thing to no, do. no. I guess I'll just have to move on. No! Out. That is not what they said. That is not what they want. That is not what we asked. You just need to chill. Man, who like it when my girls fight? Sorry, Ma. I, I, I wasn't paying attention. I, I keep thinking about Rose. Oh, just forget about her. If she doesn't want to be our roommate, that is fine with me. In fact, I'm happy she's leaving. <laughs> you see how happy I am, Dorothy? You try it. Go. <laughs> if you don't mind, Blanche, I'll laugh on the inside. Well, the car's all packed and I'm ready to go. Rose, before you go, I just want to give you a little advice. Sometimes in life, you start out down one path. Suddenly, the wind changes direction, and you find yourself swimming upstream, looking for new horizons. Ma, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> Don't get smart with me. If I was a short, bald guy in a diaper spouting this gibberish, I'd be running Indian. <laughs> well, thanks for everything. It's been great. Wow. Rose, I'll see that all your mail is forwarded. Thanks, I'd appreciate that. Oh, Rose. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Hi, Steph. Stephanie. God, am I beat. That London trip is a killer. I've got to be in Paris in 12 hours. I'm going to get some rest. Hi, Liz. We haven't met, but I'm... Stephanie's mother. I'd recognize you anywhere. No. No, no I'm Rose, your new roommate. Well, great. Welcome aboard. <laughs> well, she seems like a nice person. Where's she from? I don't know. Is she a beach person? I don't know. How long have you lived together? About a year. Jeez, and you don't know anything Look, about her? We all kind of go our separate ways around here. And besides, you have your own friends, don't you? Well, I've sort of lost touch with my new beach friends. Well, that's okay. I'm a loner. A rebel. No, you're not. Wow, I can't believe I'm actually living right on the beach. We were young and in love, and I was blowing in Charlie's ear. He lost his sense of direction on the turnpike. Oh. Yeah, we she's not care. listening. We were just so... Yeah. So crazy about each other. That, um... Aww. Girl, go back home. This is for me. <laughs> this was for you, but it's so cute. Now it's for me. <laughs> This is for you. Edible panties. <laughs> oh, what a lovely sentiment. Thank you. You really like them? Oh, like them. I love them. 
In fact, I may have the waistband with a glass of milk before I go to bed tonight. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh, I just did some shopping to cheer us up about Rose, but it didn't work. Let me tell you two a story. No. no. <laughs> a short story. No. no. An anecdote I won't take no for an answer. So 90 years old, he gets naked and goes off down the street right past these two old ladies, Carlotta and Maria. Maria turns to Carlotta and says, what the hell was that? And Carlotta says, I don't know, but whatever it was, it sure needs ironing. <laughs> What's the point? With a story, you get a point. With an anecdote, pure entertainment. Yes, and I was highly entertained. <laughs> Look, we are very upset about Rose. We don't want to be entertained. All right. I'll give you a point without a story, but just this once. <laughs> if you really miss her, go tell her. Exactly. Maybe she misses you, too. Mm -hmm. Look, Rose, you're a real sweet person, but I have to be honest with you. We're all just roommates around here, not friends. I hope that's okay. Oh, that's fine. Great. <laughs> Good. Night, Rose. Oh, hello. Is there a Rose Nile? Dorothy! You... Blanche, come on oh, in! Okay. Oh, Liz, step these are my old roommates. Dorothy and Blanche. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Liz, yes. have to run. Sorry. Oh. Nice meeting you. Right. I'll catch up with you two later. What? Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have so many running jokes. <laughs> and everything's working out? I'll be honest with you. Yes. It is a dream. Come no, true. tell them the great. truth. Great, They're just great. Yep. Rose, look, we did come here for a reason. We, we wanted to tell you. Yeah, how happy we are that you're doing so well. So I guess we should get going, huh? Oh, well, you don't have to rush off. Uh, well, I thought you were meeting your roommates. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, we're just going to be doing some beach stuff. Well, no. You take care. Uh, you too. Oh. Hello, front door. It's me again. Uh, my name is Rose Nyland in 118. I, we haven't actually met, and I, I know this may sound a little bold, but I was wondering if... Do you suppose you might like to go out and have a cup of coffee or something? I'd like to, but at the moment I'm pretty heavily involved with 122. Well... Oh. Well, maybe as friends, then. Sounds like a nice number. <laughs> So, what do you want to do tonight? I guess we could be constructed and clean our closets. We could go to a movie. We could do what we normally do, talk dirty and pig out. She's back! I'll get the bowls and the spoons. I'll get the ice cream. I'll get the chocolate sauce and whipped cream. Interesting happened while I was gone. Oh, I love Tony Ben. Oh, so do I. He was always so sweet to me. <laughs> you know him? Blanche, you dated Tony Bennett? Honey, I did more than date him. He may have left his heart in San Francisco, but he left his shorts on my radiator. <laughs> You're kidding. Hell no. Picture this. <laughs> Okay, now I wanted to hear the story. Shoot. All right, fam. So we just finished watching season two, episode 15, titled Before and After. Um, this was a good episode. I, got, I was a little sad because, oh, anyways, I'll get into it. So um, in this episode, uh, Rose is pushing herself way too much and has an incident that brings her to the hospital. She believes that during that incident, she died, went to heaven. Well, heaven adjacent, and she did not board the train to heaven, but she ended up having a ticket that was a return um, trip back to her life. So she came back, and now since she has a new lease on life, she has a new perspective, and she feels like she has to um, basically just enjoy life as much as she can because it's her second chance. So she starts going out with um, 
I guess, younger, more rowdy people that, uh, you know, call her up at any time at night and go out and party and having a good time. And that leads to some friction with her and Dorothy and Blanche. So as such, she decides to move out and, you know, find a crowd that is more like the new Rose. But unfortunately, those people are not her friends. They're just her roommates and she starts to get lonely. And so do the girls. The girls miss her and they, you know, they don't want to impede on her new life, but at the same time, they miss her friend, their friend. And thankfully, everybody came to their senses and Rose came back and um, our girls are back together. So I'm super happy. I enjoyed the fact that they took the t that time apart because, um, it just shows that their living arrangement is not just roommates. They're actually friends, they're family. And um, they, they, they're they perfect together, even though they might disagree, even though they might argue, even though people might change, but ultimately they were meant to be together as a unit. And it's so great to have them back together and another enjoyable episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And um, it was supposed to be my last episode that I'm going to shoot today, but I think I'm going to do a couple more because... I'm in the swing of it and it's so good. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.